In the famous words of Marquez Keith Brownlee, what is a photo? Now this question may sound a little silly at first because obviously we know what a photo is, but if you think about it, photos have become a lot more complicated, especially in the world we live in in 2023 where AI is now a thing, not even just like a thing, but a thing in our smartphones, like it's very accessible. So I guess the question really should be, what constitutes a real photo? And I think it might help if I break this whole conversation into what I'm gonna call the three stages of smartphone photography. Now the first stage is very simple. If you remember in the good old days, AKA like 10 years ago, smartphones would just take photos. That was it, you know, there was no post-processing. Whatever you saw in the viewfinder on your screen was essentially what you got. You, you, you take the picture and, and the picture is the picture and that's about it. But then over the past few years, we've gone into stage two, which is post-processing essentially. So you know a lot of times if you take a photo with your phone and then you immediately go to your camera roll to look at it, a lot of times after a couple seconds, it'll change the way the photo looks because it post-processed it to make it, well, what it thinks is better. And Google's Pixel line of phones are very well known for this. They have so much like just AI learning and it knows like how a photo should look in certain situations, you know, uh, if, especially with a Google Pixel, but also other phones as well. If you take a photo, say for example, of just a landscape, you have the sky, you have a blue sky in the photo, it'll recognize that that is the sky and it'll make it more blue. It'll bring up the blue color in your photo to make it pop more. And so at that point, is your photo still real? If the phone is using AI to bring up the color more, maybe make it more contrasty, like yeah, I would say so. I would say that's still a real photo. It's just, you know, been edited. I mean, you can think about it this way too. Like if I take a photo, say there was no post-processing, but I take a photo and I uh, throw it into Adobe Lightroom and I, and I change the colors myself. Is that still a real photo? I mean, yeah, I, I would say so. It's just an edited photo. But then in even more recent years, we've reached stage three of photography in smartphones. And that is AI and not just post-processing AI, like actual AI that can literally change images. So for example, Google released their magic eraser for their Pixel phones a few years back. And you've probably seen this before, but essentially you have a photo and you circle something that you wanna remove and it'll use AI to remove that and then fill in the missing information. And so you could take a picture and there's random people in the background, you circle them, remove them. It looks like they were never there. It's a super cool feature. Like the tech is literally awesome. It's so awesome. But also it's like, at that point, is the photo real? I don't know. Like that's a thing, that's the thing that's up for discussion. And while magic eraser may not be like super concerning or anything, what could potentially be concerning is what I'm gonna call stage 3.5 of smartphone photography. And the reason I say 3.5 is because it still has to do with AI. It's just that the AI has gotten so much more advanced and it seems like it, it's kind of come out of nowhere because within the past like year or so, the consumers have gotten access to just like so much advanced AI stuff like ChatGPT, for example, or Bard or other related language models or whatever you call those nowadays. And then a few months back, we got access to Photoshop's generative AI fill, which is literally insane. Like if you have not seen this Photoshop AI stuff, it's crazy. Like you can just circle something in a photo and then type in a box what you want the AI to change it to and it'll just change it. You can even expand photos. Like if you have just a photo of you like standing in a field, you can expand your area and then it'll just fill all the area that doesn't even exist. Like that land that it made is not real. It just, it just made it. And you know, don't get me wrong. Like I honestly love this stuff. Like it's cool, it's advanced tech. I like to use it. I think it's great, but it's also a little concerning for what the future holds. Because about a month ago, Google released the Pixel 8 series of devices and they released something that's kind of similar to Photoshop's AI and that is Google's 
Magic Editor. And Google's is not as robust as Photoshop's because like I said, Photoshop, you can just type in whatever you want and it'll just, you know, change it to that. It's crazy. But with Google's, you can select things and erase them, but it's gotten so much smarter. Like for example, I had a picture of me holding an iPhone in my hand and I used the magic editor to select the iPhone and delete it. And it did, and it created my hand behind the iPhone. Like it just, that's not my hand, but it made it as if it was my hand. Like at, the, at this point, is that photo real? Like, no, that, that, that photo is not real. <laughs> and so the reason I can be slightly concerned for the future is because now this AI stuff is just getting into the hands of literally everyone. Like while not everybody may have Photoshop, everybody does have a smartphone. And now we're seeing this advanced AI stuff come to smartphones. And you know, it can totally be used in like wholesome ways. Like say you just wanna remove a pimple off of your face. You can do that very easily. Let's say you just wanna remove a fire hydrant from the background of your photo. You can do that. Like that's a wholesome thing. You're just making your photos look better. But it gets a little concerning when, you know, people may use it for malicious intent. But before we get to that, we actually have a word from today's sponsor. Yes, we actually have a sponsor on today's video and it's actually been sitting behind me this whole time. And so today's video is sponsored by Yeelight. Now Yeelight makes a variety of different RGB smart lighting devices, but what we're talking about today is their smart lamp cubes. And so essentially how this works is I have one base, which is what actually powers the cubes, and then you can link these cubes together and one base can power up to six different cubes. And they have three different types of cubes, a matrix cube, a panel cube, and a spot cube. Now the matrix cube is specifically cool because it has a five by five dot pattern, which can kind of be used as a display, like a 25 pixel display. And so using the app, you can actually set it up to use as a clock and have like a cool RGB desk clock, or you can even just draw your own designs pixel by pixel and, you know, link together as many of these cubes as you want. You can get multiple bases, multiple cubes, and just do like a whole like pixel art if you wanted to. And the app also has a bunch of preset lighting effects that you can choose from, or you can just set them a solid color if you just want something glowing in your background. But anyways, I'll put a link to these Yeelight cubes in the description of this video. So feel free to check them out. And huge thanks to Yeelight for sponsoring today's video. So speaking about how people could use this AI photo editing to be malicious, you know, we've kind of, We've kind of already seen it a little bit. Now I would say it's more so happened with video, but that's a, that's also another topic I wanna talk about. But like people can literally just alter photos and alter videos to make up stuff that isn't real. I think one example of this, and this is a video example, but still kind of related is there, I, I literally saw like yesterday, I think it was, there was a video of Mr. Beast doing an iPhone giveaway where somebody like dubbed his voice to sound like it was him talking. And it was like an actual, like sponsored post on TikTok. Like, I don't know, how did TikTok let that go through to be a, like an actual sponsored thing on their platform? And the dubbed voice didn't even sound good. Like it, it literally did not really sound like Mr. Beast hardly at all. And, and I'm like, I mean, if people are falling for this, you know, I feel like it's pretty obvious that it's not real, but I think people do actually fall for it, which is just awful. But even just going back to photos, I can also just imagine it being used as a way for people to get away with things. Like say, you know, there's a crime scene and somebody takes a photo, edits it with, you know, Photoshop or magic eraser or whatever it is, and they submit that as evidence for the case. Now I would hope that there's detectors that could see that it's an edited photo and it wouldn't be a problem, but also like, how good is this stuff gonna get? Like, is it gonna get to the point where it's not detectable and then it actually could be a problem? And I guess also wrapping this up back to the beginning, like even not talking about malicious intent, people trying to, you know, get away with stuff with using this AI editing, just like in general, like if you see a photo that you know has a bunch of AI editing in it, do you care? Just like generally speaking, like if somebody in your family posts a photo on Instagram and it has a bunch of stuff that's edited and it's not like technically actually reality, like does that bother you? Like what is a photo, you know? Is that real? Is it not real? Is it kind of real? 
I don't know. It, it kind of, again, it's up for discussion. I guess the question for you guys is, what do you think? Do you like all of this AI editing? Do you not like it? Are you scared of its future? Do you not really care? Do you just think it's cool? Uh, yeah. I guess let me know what you guys think. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thanks again to Ye Light for sponsoring this video and uh, God bless. And we'll see you guys in the next one.